All right, next we're going to show you the only secret sauce in this entire series uh, for creating all these shapes, and that's just using uh, the random function to make decisions for us. If you can um, understand this video, then you can understand pretty much everything else we're gonna do as far as what a generative design system is and how you can just use random to create an entire system. There's not uh, a lot of magic after that. Just some complicated drawing here and there, and not even that complicated, really. So, what are we talking about? Well, we saw in the original photo that there were occasionally times when 12 items would be drawn instead of just six. So how might we make that simple rule-based decision? Um, we'll come up with a rule that uh, spits out either six or 12 as the decision. So the tool that we will use to make this uh, decision or this rule is random. What we're going to do is create a random number, call it rando, between 0 and 1. And we can just uh, do it like this, and it'll create a random number between 0 and 1. Why don't we console log that out and see what we get? So let's pay attention down here. 0 0.8, 0 0.59, 0 0.72. So every time we run the sketch, we get something random. So let's make a decision based on uh, the output that we're getting here. So let's create a variable that will hold the number of shapes we want to draw. In this case, that shape is going to be a line, but just for clarity, uh, for ease of use across different shapes, why don't we just say let number of shapes or num shapes uh, be a variable. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the results of rando and say if rando is greater than 0 0.5, so there's a 50-50 chance that it's going to be greater than 0 0.5 because that number's coming back is somewhere between 0 and 1. If it's greater than 0 0.5, then num shapes should be equal to sides. Else, num shapes is equal to sides times 2 or 12. Using these variables allows us to make one change up here, and then the rest of our code will uh, be fine without us having to go in there and change things manually. With that in mind, there's a, a couple other things we need to do down here now. Uh, for instance, the angle is being determined by the number of sides, but now we've changed the number of shapes we want to create or the number of rotations we want to make. That means the angle is going to be different. So what is the angle equal to? It's now equal to a ro single rotation divided by the number of shapes. So if we get 12, we want to rotate 12 times. That means that we should change this too because we want to rotate 12 times. Now let's run this and see what we get. Aha, a 12, run it again. We should, oh, there it dropped back but uh, underneath. We should probably console log this for clarity. So anytime rando comes back with a result under 0 0.5, wait, which one is which? If it's over, if it's under 0 0.5, it's going to be 12 sides. Yes, okay. So right now we're over, which means we're going to get 6. So if it's under, we should get 12. There it is. So we are under and we get 12. And because we're using uh, variables throughout, everything is nice and tidy. Cool, so that's, that's really the essence of the entire system. You choose a rule, here's our rule. And that rule is used to make a decision. The output of that decision is the value of num shapes. And that's why a simple definition of a generative system is a rule-based decision-making uh, system. Can't really use system within the definition, but fire me later. Now, how else could we use this? Why don't we use another random number to determine what color to use? And this is something we're going to do throughout as well. So I just want to uh, show you how it works here um, so that we're comfortable with it. We're going to do another one, and we're going to use random in a slightly different way. Random will take two numbers. And um, because we have, let's say we have this palette here, and we want to choose a color from here randomly, it's, we want to choose a random number between 0 and however many colors there are to choose from. So the way to do that is to get the length of our palette array. And then let's console log this out. 
Okay, so here's a problem. We can't access an array at you know, spot 1.69. We need it to be an integer. So an easy way to do that is to wrap this in the floor function. And what that will do is round down to the nearest integer. All right, so that means if we are slightly above zero, the number will become zero. If it's slightly above one, the number will become one. Now let's see what we get. We should only get zeros or ones. A lot of ones. Yep, there's another zero and a one. Okay, cool. So that's exactly what we want. And now we can use that to get a stroke color, right? So let's uh, create a variable and call it stroke color and set it equal to whatever spot in the array we've just come up with. And it's going to be either 0 or 1. So let's leave the um, outside circle at pink. And let's use this new variable to decide what the stroke will be for our lines. And uh, we're going to keep going. There's one. It went to pink, refresh, blue. So now we have two different decisions being made for us. How many shapes should be drawn and what color those shapes will be. That's really all we're going to be doing. I know I keep saying that, but I want to emphasize how simple this is. It looks complicated because the, the visual uh, output is uh, nice and complicated for the eye. But really the decision making, the system itself is very simple. We're just using random to come up with some decisions for us. If it's above a certain uh, number, then do one thing. If it is a zero, do one thing. If it's a one, do another. This is also great because we can uh, add easily new, um, new things here because we've used length and we've used all of our, our variables responsibly. We should be able to see some, there's one, lime green options. And so now our system is very flexible the way that we've written it. And you want to try to maintain that as much as possible. The best way to do that is to use variables. Um, and that's all I have to really say about that. Oh, I guess we didn't need any of this up here. So apologies for that. All right.